Hi guys, I finally got my hands on the late 2020 razor blade stealth with the 11th gen Tiger Lake Intel Core i7 1165G7 CPU. Specifically, I purchased the $2000 version with the 60Hz 1080p OLED display. Is it the best ultralight gaming laptop? As I said in my first impressions video, this laptop is pretty amazing. Stay tuned for more. So how's the late 2020 Razer Blade Stealth any different than the early 2020 version? Well, we get an upgrade from the 10th gen 1065G7 to the 11th gen 1165G7, as well as a 1080p OLED screen for $2,000. Don't worry though, the cheaper 120Hz non-OLED panel is still available for $1,800. With both versions, you get the same GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q GPU, 16GB of RAM, and 512GB of storage. Some might say that the update from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4 might be an advantage, but I say nay. Razer was already maxing out the Thunderbolt 3 port to 40 gigabits per second. What is good is that Razer is now including two Thunderbolt ports instead of just one. I'll touch on this a little bit later in the video though. Regardless of which version you get, the Stealth screams quality and is what I recommend if you want the lightest Ultrabook for gaming as well as everyday use. If you want a game, this is one of the only Ultrabooks with a dedicated GPU. If you want to bring this thing around the office, this is one of the few gaming laptops without flashy LEDs. Want to bring this thing across campus? At only 3.1 pounds, this weighs the same as a 13-inch MacBook Pro, but with a dedicated GPU. The black anodization layer on the unibody aluminum chassis looks very professional and is what my wife prefers over the Asus Zephyrus G14. But if you care about fingerprint smudges or chipping around the edges, then you should look into getting a skin. Moving to the keyboard, I still love it. Last year, Razer had a weird right shift key placement, but that's all fixed now. I prefer this keyboard over any other Windows laptop keyboard and it rivals the keyboards from Logitech. And yes, I think this keyboard feels better than all current MacBook keyboards too, whether they are from Apple's butterfly keys or the latest traditional scissor keys. The backlit keys on this keyboard just feel firm but quiet, perfectly placed, and require the perfect amount of activation force and key travel for my preferences. Moving to the upgradability, the RAM is soldered on and non-upgradable but Razer does let you upgrade the 512GB SSD, which I recommend since some games are getting to be over 100GB. That said, if you don't play games that often or are willing to play from an external drive, then 512GB is perfectly fine and adequate. Regarding the sound, it's just as fine as always. With four speakers, there exists slightly more bass than other laptops. Maybe not as much as a MacBook Pro, but yeah, the sound is pretty good on this thing. One thing I recommend disabling though, is the THX spatial audio, unless you enjoy fake echoes. Nevertheless, I hear no distortion at loud volumes on this thing. The trackpad is just as great as always and is just as good as Apple's trackpads. Its sensitivity and accuracy are top of the line, the gestures work 100% of the time, and there is no delay between when I move my finger and when the laptop registers the movement. This thing earns 10 points for Hufflepuff. Okay, so we finally made it to the display. Do I recommend the $200 premium for the OLED panel? It's really your call. Is the screen gorgeous? Yes. Is the contrast really high? Also yes. But I don't know. I think I'll always be nervous about screen burn-in on OLED panels. Can you prevent it by auto-hiding the taskbar? Sure. Can you prevent it by noticing image retention first and then taking corrective action? Again, absolutely. But again, to me, I don't need the absolute best 13-inch screen on my laptop. The 50-inch QLED behind me is a different story though. What about response time and ghosting? Jared's tech showed that the 120Hz panel gets around 30 milliseconds of response time, nowhere near the Razer Blade 15's 1 millisecond. Now, I don't have the required photo sensor and oscilloscope to test this OLED screen's response time, but since I don't see any 1 millisecond claims for this screen on Razer's website, I would assume that the response time is still pretty high. I do see ghosting when using Blur Buster's motion test though. So yeah, whether you get the 60Hz OLED or the 120Hz LCD panel, if you care about super fast response times and minimal ghosting while gaming on a 13 inch screen, you should probably look elsewhere. But as I said before, just use an external monitor when you want the best picture quality. 
Moving to the ports, we have two USB 3.1 Type A ports, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a headphone and microphone combo port. As I said before, having an extra Thunderbolt port is great, but Thunderbolt 4 isn't any faster as the third generation in this laptop, so your eGPUs won't be any better. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys really quickly. Are eGPUs going to continue to be popular? I think I heard rumors that Apple is killing support for them with their M1 laptops. Regardless, I love seeing full-sized USB Type-A ports for peripherals, something missing on MacBooks since 2015, and 1080p webcams and full-speed Thunderbolt ports, something missing on the Asus Zephyrus G14. Okay, now let's finally talk about that CPU upgrade. In the early 2020 Razer Blade Stealth, Razer upgraded from the 15 watt variant of the 1065G7 to the 25 watt variant without affecting thermals. Now, for the late 2020 Stealth, we have the 11th gen 28 watt Core i7 1165G7, which shows a significant boost in single core performance from 1200 to over 1500. So as I said in my first impressions video, this is over a 30% boost over the early 2020 Stealth and a 25% boost over Zephyrus G14's single core score of 1200. As a result, the late 2020 Razorblade Stealth is more powerful than the Zephyrus G14 from a single core performance standpoint only. But the 5000 multi-core performance in Geekbench 5 doesn't compete against the 7 nanometer Ryzen CPU from Zephyrus G14, which gets a score of almost 8000. As for the GPU, we still get the same GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q with a 40,000 OpenCL graphical performance score in Geekbench 5. So no upgrade here, but instead Razer keeps the power draw low, the heat low, and therefore the efficiency high. An RTX 2060 draws almost twice the power as the GTX 1650 Ti for only a 50% improvement in performance. So what does this all mean? How well does this thing game? I ran all games at 1080p maxed out settings and Razer's gaming mode off. I really don't like 80 degrees CPU temperatures and loud fans. Grand Theft Auto V benchmarked in the 50s to 70s. This CPU bound game performs much better than when I played it on the early 2020 Razer Blade Stealth, which only got 35 FPS. Doom got around 120 FPS, which is slightly more than the 100 FPS from before. Witcher 3 followed suit and averaged 35 FPS, again up from the 30 FPS, and CSGO ran around 160 FPS, and just like before, it is up from the approximate 130 FPS. So yeah, even without a GPU upgrade, we are still seeing an approximate 20% increase in gaming performance over the early 2020 Razer Blade Stealth, even without a GPU upgrade. And the CPU bound games like Grand Theft Auto V will have an even better performance boost. And I still don't see any thermal throttling in any of these games. The dual fan cooling solution in this laptop is top notch. And no, you won't go deaf from these fans as long as you keep Razer's gaming mode turned off. They aren't annoying at all. So what about SolidWorks? Although I technically can't recommend a laptop without an officially supported Quadro card, Unofficially, this laptop works pretty good. The SOLIDWORKS benchmark got an overall score of 58.9 and a simulation score of 41.8. So if you want a decent laptop for small SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies, this laptop won't let you down. Okay, so let's talk battery life. On the 120Hz 1080p version, people are seeing anywhere between 6 and 8 hours of mixed usage. And we all know that 4K OLED panels will shave about 2 hours off of that but this is a 1080p OLED panel. Do we regain some of that precious battery life? Eh, I'm seeing about four hours just watching YouTube videos in the Edge browser. So yeah, get the 120 Hertz non-OLED version if you care about battery life. So that leads us to the question, do I recommend this laptop? You bet. It is one of the most gorgeous looking OLED panels in a laptop, or you can get the 120Hz non-OLED version if you're afraid of screen burn-in and you want better battery life. The keyboard and trackpad are better than any other Windows laptop, and the black anodized aluminum unibody chassis screams quality. Is the early 2020 version just as good? Almost, and that one comes with a huge discount linked below. Did Razer just announce the cheaper Razerbook 13? Yeah, but that laptop doesn't have a dedicated GPU. If you want the same build quality for a little bit less, it might be a good idea, but I don't know. 
I'd still recommend getting the early 2020 Blade Stealth over the new Razorbook if cost is important to you. You'll just get way more bang for your buck. And as I keep saying, is the Zephyrus G14 still much faster than this thing? Of course, but the Zephyrus G14 weighs almost half a pound more, doesn't feel as premium, and forces you to give up Thunderbolt 4 and a webcam with Face ID sign-in. So yeah, you know you want this stealth, just buy it already. In conclusion, is the late 2020 Blade Stealth a good buy? Is it the most powerful laptop with a Ryzen CPU and RTX GPU? No, but it still feels more premium than everything else. As I said in my first impressions video, if you want one of the best performing gaming laptops in a small and light premium aluminum chassis, one that comes with 16GB of RAM, one that has upgradable SSD storage, one with slim bezels around the 120Hz or OLED display that includes a webcam, one that comes with Thunderbolt 4 as well as full-sized USB 3.1, one with great sounding speakers, one with a great battery life, one with the best feeling keyboard and trackpad I've ever used, one with around 5 times the graphical performance over any Intel based 13 inch MacBook Pro, and one that can game at max settings without thermal throttling, then the late 2020 Razer Blade Stealth is for you. Just remember, it only has 512GB of SSD storage out of the box, it doesn't include a Ryzen CPU, yet, it's still more expensive than the Zephyrus G14, and the early 2020 Razer Blade Stealth is almost as good but with a huge discount. But what do you guys think? Would you spend $1,800 to $2,000 on the late 2020 Razor Blade Stealth, or is the early 2020 Blade Stealth just fine? Do you think the Zephyrus G14 is still a better laptop? And let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me test next. And finally, hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help the channel out, and I'll catch you in the next one.